It's time now for the Words of Knowledge broadcast with Pastor Alan Harrington, pastor of the World's Church of the Living God, located at 2110 Glass Street, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Now, here's Pastor Alan Harrington. Jesus. Give him every praise, eternal praise, and it's still not enough. Dear merciful God, we praise your blessed holy name. We thank you. Fathers, we come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your kindness. We always praise you for your goodness. Thank you. We glorify your holy name and we declare in Jesus' name that holy is your name. Holy, magnificent is your blessed, holy name. And Father, we come to you now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we come through the veil. We praise you and thank you for your goodness. Thank you for allowing us to approach your holy throne, to approach the throne of grace. Thank you for even knowing us for calling us our names before we were ever created, before we were ever born. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your goodness. And I ask, Father, in Jesus' name, that you will touch the hearts of your people today. I ask in Jesus' name that you will move in our midst by your Holy Spirit, that you will deliver today. Thank you for deliverance. We praise you. We thank you in advance. Heal, Father, by the grace of God and by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Get glory, and we thank you in advance for your healing. And we praise and bless your name in no other name but Jesus of Nazareth. We thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Let's praise God. Let's get to the word of God. Hallelujah. Don't know why, but it, God just sort of, you know, how you sort of, you moving around, you know what you got to do to get, to get yourself together, get out of the house, get ready for service, and come to church and make haste. <laughs> praise God. For whatever reason, make haste. So praise God. <laughs> I believe God's got something for us today. So we're going to we're going to go since we mentioned Hebrews we're going to go to Hebrews. The book of Hebrews and I think we've read it recently Hebrews the second chapter in the 6th verse but one in a certain place testified saying what is man who are we what is man that that you're mindful of him or the son of man that you even visited him God visited us in, in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. It says, you made him a little lower than the angels. You crowned him with glory and honor. You did set him over the works of your hands. Talking about, this, this right here is talking about Jesus. Because it goes on to say, 
Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that he's put all in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him. But now we see not yet all things put under him. Because the world is still going on in its own way. We, we, we see that. Death is taking people every day. Disease is still around. But he still, he has power over ev everything is under the hand, of, under the obedience of God. Everything has to obey God. And that's why the, the 70 disciples that he sent out to prepare the way for him to visit the cities that he was going to visit, they came back and they were, he, he, he gave them the authority, gave them power. And they came back and they were so surprised that even the demons are subject, they, they're subject to us, but it wasn't about them. Through your name, Everything is under, is in subjection to the Lord Jesus Christ. Anything that we deal with on a daily basis, any kind of way, whether it be in our infirmities, our sicknesses, or whatever it is, disease, illness, whatever it is, our life, if we belong to him. Now, everything's subject to him anyway. Everything is subject to God. Those things that cause those things that cause us problems, emotionally and mentally, cause us to to worry and to think. Are we, and and no, no Christian should live. No believer, I'll say that. No believer should live with anxiety. No, should live in fear. And worry, no, none. And the book says you cast all your cares on him. Why? Because he cares. And everything is subject to him. So what do we, cast your care on him. So we, we should, no matter our, our bodies, the Bible speaks of a sacrifice in our bodies. Sickness, let's, let's give it to the Lord. And don't always declare the negative, but declare by the word of God. Now you can prophesy to yourself through the word of God. Yes, that with his stripes, I am healed. How do you know? Because I was. Come on now. I was healed. You can declare that no matter what. that you can, according to scripture, you can do all things through Christ, through the Lord, the spirit of, of the anointing of the Lord Jesus Christ. But we see Jesus, we see Jesus. Can you see Jesus? That's what I do, I, God, I, I'm not in, you know, but I pray for that. I pray that God will let the saints of God really see him, to know him. That believers, we've heard, people have heard about him, but have they met him? Have to meet Jesus and know him and see him. Things happen when you meet God. Things happen when, when you see Jesus in your everyday life. When you open your eyes, I'm telling you, you do. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And you see him, you know it. You know, I'm not saying you see a man, so I'm not saying that. But you, his spirit is anointing and you know, you see his goodness. People haven't, they don't see him. It's like we talk about a God who's way off somewhere. No, he's a God at hand. Yes, he is. How more at hand can he be than Christ in you? is the hope of glory, said Colossians. In sight of Christ, that spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost. So we lift our eyes and our hands to heaven and we pray and bless the name of God and realizing that he is in us. 
he has deposited in us a portion of his spirit. And, and the book says that we see Jesus. And I hope, to, I hope that if you've never seen him, and this is what happens to some people, they, they just don't, they never see him. They get in the habit of playing church. Or they, you know, they just go to church. As people call it, they're more interested in everything else except the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody sitting here right now is doing the same thing. Need God's help. And paying attention to everything else but God, but his word. Can you see Jesus? Come on now. People need to see, see the Lord. Listen, Paul saw him, didn't he? When he, got, he was blinded, but he saw. <laughs> got knocked off his horse and blinded, but he saw. He met him. And his whole life, everything changed. And that's what people need. You never, somebody who professes the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, they say they, they have God, okay. Your life will never change. Unless you see him in it, and unless your mind is, unless you're converted, turn from your own way, your own way of thinking to the way of God. Turn to his word. He said, we see him, we see this Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels. Isn't that something? God sent his son for our, our deliverance. And he had to make him a, a little lower than the angelic host in nature, but he had a divine nature also. He was made in the likeness of a man. He was made a little lower than the angels. Why? For the suffering of death. But he's crowned with glory that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. By the grace of God, because of God's grace and love for us, Jesus had to taste death for each and every one of us. For it became him, for whom are all things. Now, and, and now this, this is, is uh, declared a few times in different ways in the Bible, especially in, in, the, in the Old Testament too and in the New Testament. And it's speaking about God. And it also the same is speaking about Jesus, sometimes specifically about Jesus, sometimes specifically about the Father. And I believe, let me read it and see, make sure, I believe this is speaking specifically about the Father. But you know, Jesus said that I and my Father are one. You know? You know? And that's why pe people can't really get it. They, they ignore Jesus, trying to get to the, never happened. It says, no man even comes to the Father except through me. It's all, everything's about Jesus. And, it's, and he said here, for it became him. For whom are all things? All things are for him. And by whom are all things? All things are, are produced by him in bringing many sons unto glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, to make. Now, it pleased the Father because everything belongs to God. So this is talking about the Father in this sense. In bringing many sons to glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering, to make it complete. To have Jesus suffer through and be... A, a, just covered with every sin that we've ever committed. Yes. And the Bible says he that, that knew no sin did what? He became sin for us. He, he, so he, he, and he had to pay because the wages of sin, what, our, our sin debt was, was what? Death. The, what we owed was death. Not just dying, yeah, sin kills, takes you to the grave. He'll do that. But sin is, uh, it produces, it gives what we call that second death, eternal damnation. So Jesus had to conquer death and hell. And it says he made the captain, isn't that something? The captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. We might come back to that. We're going to have to come, come back to that. 
And then it goes on, on to say in the 15th verse, no, 14th verse. No, I'm not going to read this. <laughs> 12th verse. 11th verse. Let's go ahead and just, just get it. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is good. And it says, for both he that sanctifies and they who are sanctified are all of one. We, we all belong to God. For which cause he is, Jesus is not ashamed to call us brothers, his brethren, saying, I will declare thy name. Uh, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the church will I sing praise to thee. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I, look, me and the children which God has given me. God gave us to the Lord Jesus Christ. Predestined us for salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus, in turn, presents us back to the Father. We become his, his children through, through the, the, people call it the vicarious sacrifice of Christ. He, he suffered for everything that we've ever done. He paid our sin debt. He died our death. He, he suffered our shame so that we could have glory with God. It's not just about religion and just, you know, mundane, just church service and just, and it's not about that. Not about some stagnant, just, just some kind of religious way of life and folks go home and, 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 and see people do that to ease their mind. They feel like they, they've done God a favor. They've done their, 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 their duties, their spiritual duties and in being, being a church school, and they figure that's, that's it, that's all it takes. It's more than that, it's about a life. Living a life that can only come from God, a life from God that has to be put inside of each and every, every believer, every born again believer. We're gonna, we're gonna talk about it for a little bit. And then he says, I am the children, which, let me see, I, okay, which God has given me. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he himself, he himself likewise took part in the same. He had to become flesh and blood. That through death, that through his death, he might do what? Destroy him that had the power of death. That is the devil. He had to die. Praise God. So who, who, who's in charge of the death angel? Satan. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Everything's subject to God. But Jesus had to die so that he could conquer death in order for us to be delivered from eternal damnation and death. And that's why death has no, no victory over us. That's why the Bible speaks of when a, when a believer dies, they go to sleep. And we're going to be resurrected to life. You know, we, that's why, that's, but death, death is separation from life. You know that. We have been delivered. And Jesus, he took on the nature of flesh and blood. So that he could, through death, destroy him that had power of death, that is the, the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death, human beings, were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels. Angels don't have to worry about death. They're spiritually created beings by God. But he took on him the seed of Abraham. Right along with the promise of God. Thank you, Jesus. Wherefore in all things it behooved him, it behooved Jesus to be made like unto his brothers, to mankind. And it go, that goes right along with Leviticus. So that he could be our kinsman redeemer. Our goel, our goel. The only one who could pay the price for our sins. Who was willing to pay the price. 
so he could be made like unto our brothers. So why? So that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest, praise God, in things pertaining to God. And the Bible speaks of that too. How men were appointed to the priesthood who could have compassion on the ignorant. People who didn't know the things of God, who, who weren't with the, didn't have the understanding of God, didn't know what to do to please God, didn't understand the life that God wanted them to live. And when they fell into, when they messed up, fell into sin or messed up, the high priest in the older time, he wouldn't know exactly what sacrifices to offer. And he wouldn't, he couldn't, he wouldn't be like judgmental on, on the people because he was, he was a, a human being too. And he knew that he was compassed about with all kind of infirmity and fault and failure. Jesus knows us. He died our death so we could be delivered. He rose from the dead. God raised him from the dead on the third day. You know that. And he's at the right hand of the Bible. We're not going to go to that and get it. It's in Hebrews 2. He's at the right hand of God even now, making intercession for the saints of God. God loves us. We're well taken care of. And he tells us, and since we're talking about death, let's, let's, we're going to read this and I, I got to get to something else. Oh, well, let's finish this. Wherever in all things it behooved him, to be made like unto his brethren that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. For in that he himself has suffered, being tempted, and Jesus was tempted, but he never yielded, he never failed. He is able to succor them that are tempted. Hallelujah. He knows what we're going through. What does that mean, able to succor them, to help them, to help those who are? So we, we think we're going through, no, we don't go through anything alone. We're never without the grace of God. We're never without, without the help of God. And, and the Bible speaks of it. I got to read this again here if we can find it. I tell you what, let's go to the book of Timothy, 2 Timothy. I and my Father are one, said Jesus. And I feel sorry for people who don't really have that revelation. Some people think that, uh, that Jesus and people just, he's like, okay, take it or leave it. Yeah, I believe, we, we say that. I believe this God's word, but I take it or leave it. It's, also not believers. Come on, take it or leave it. I'm just going to read a little bit. Okay, yeah, okay. Second Timothy, the first chapter, since we're talking about death. We have been redeemed. Those who have been saved have been redeemed. If you have not been saved, no doubt, according to this Bible, you will, you will. Every human being that's ever lived is going to live forever. But sadly, most of them are going to live separated from God in a burning hot hell forever. Reunited with their bodies, a body that will not be burned up, will not consume. Nerve ending, stealing, and people, are, people have the guts to play church. Don't. People have the, and Satan knows it. They have the, the, and this is where pride comes from. So full of pride that they won't, they won't listen. They won't take God seriously. No. If you've been redeemed, you need to wake up every day praising the Lord. I'm serious. First of all, I'm still here. Thank you. Thank you that my name, not do I thank God for his ministry. Why, why do we have ministry? Why? Ministry is, is for service 
And, and uh, so far as the ministering of the gospel, as Paul put it, I believe it covers everything, every other ministry in, involved in God's church that God has. Not that we are so faithful or whatever. God has counted us faithful. And he's put us in his ministry. So we should praise God every day for every office. Forgiven. If, if we are, if you have been dedicated, if you are dedicated, praise God. Because that's not a part of human nature. If you're dedicated to God, it's, it's because of a work that God has done inside of you. That God has done. If you believe God, if you have faith, well, it's, it's not just because you have developed faith. No, it's because God, who is faithful, has let you have a taste of his faith. Thank you, Jesus. If you can believe God for just about anything at certain times, and it doesn't just live like that, going like that all the time. It's not like a, a constant. But at a certain time, when something's needed and it hits you, you just believe God. And it happens, you believe God. That's when God has hit you with that, that mustard seed of faith, of the faith of God, his faith. No, the faith of God. We have been redeemed. We've been saved. You don't have to worry about death. The Bible says he's able to deliver them who, who all their lives, they, they fear death. Believers don't have to fear death. I'm not just no, you shouldn't want it. Yeah, no. Don't welcome it. No. But to fear it. Mm -mm, knowing that death, death is inevitable. This coming, this if Jesus tarries. I'm, I'm hoping to see the rapture first. But if you have a fear of death, you, you're missing something. Believers have been granted victory. Jesus has defeated death and hell. He, man, he, he, he's conquered it. And we live through his victory. So the book tells us here, we're going to let, let this go here, in this part in just a minute. In 2 Timothy, first chapter, brother, let's see. Uh, uh, seventh verse, that's good. 2 Timothy 1st chapter starting with the 7th verse. For God hath not given us a spirit of fear. Uh oh. So fear is a spirit? Uh oh. Fear comes from a spirit. Hallelujah. That's, that's amazing. So when you, you seem to be overcome with fear a sudden out of nowhere, anxiety seems to take you. What is that? That's a spirit. God has not given us the spirit of fear. But no, of no, power. But of power. And but of, of what is power? Authority. Christians, believers, I keep saying Christians because that's, that's the word for the, for the church world, but that's what the believers were first called in Antioch. Christians, because they were Christ-like. Believers don't have to live in fear. That comes from a demon. And sometimes we welcome it. We open the door for it. That the book tells us don't give any place to the devil. Give no place to the devil, it says. And Job said, the thing that I feared did what? It came upon me. What I feared, I brought it. Secure, wealthy and all that, but he, he didn't have, he said, but I had no rest. Why? Because of fear. The thing that I greatly feared has come upon me. 
Fear comes from a spirit. Now, there are two kinds of fear then. So there's a healthy fear, right? Okay, there's something that lets you know that, hey, if I jump off this building, I'm not gonna make it, you know? I can't have faith that I'm gonna make it if I step out here on, on the interstate in front of all these cars and 18 wheelers. We fear to, to do harm, and the, but the, the most important fear is, and this is a good fear, is the, the reverential trust of God. Fear to do evil. That's what people should fear, should fear to do evil. To live a life outside the life that God has, has, has awarded and appointed us. So, go ahead and read it, brother. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. Mm -hmm but of power. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Can you, can you feel that? That God, now I believe that. God has given us, he's not given us the spirit of fear, so that comes from somebody else. But he's given us what power? And what, of did, love. And of love. So can you feel that? Yes, sir. That word of God. Through faith, can you, can you receive that? Make you hold your, your head up a little bit, not in pride, but in confidence. But he's given a spirit of power and of love. And of a sound and mind. And of a sound mind, clear mind. You know who, who you love. You, you know who God is. You know the life that God has given you. Read it, brother. Be not therefore <laughs> ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. Amen. Nor of me, his prisoner. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. But be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. Ooh, what you, well, I wonder what he meant by all that. Don't be ashamed of the gospel. Don't be ashamed of me, his, the, the prisoner of the Lord. Don't try to hide who you are so that you won't be singled out by persecution by the world or, or ridiculed you know, by the world. Don't try to hide who you are. I'm not, don't, don't try to just flaunt yourself. That's, that's, that's a whole different message right there. Go ahead and read, brother. Who has saved us. Uh -huh. According to the power of God. Yes, sir. Who has saved us. God has saved us, okay. And called us with a holy calling. So we're all called. Those who have been saved. We're all called and we all have a holy calling. We all have a responsibility toward God. We all have a mission. Thank you, Jesus. A, and it's sanctified by God. Something is set apart, set apart for us to do that nobody else can do. So, well, a lot of people are saying that, but not like me. Maybe they don't want to seem like me. <laughs> a lot of people can preach that God's called. I'm not talking about because a lot, you got a lot of people preaching, but all of them aren't called. But in, in the ministry, even all ministers, saved men of God, they, don't, they have the same message. We can't nobody do it like each and every day. Nobody can preach like you or be like, nobody can. That's specifically for you, whatever you're called to do. If you're in the help ministry, whatever, whatever it is, if you are to offer prayer, you bring a personal, a certain degree of faith to that prayer meeting, whatever it is. And nobody can bring that piece but you. To bring compassion. Nobody can show that but you. But everybody can show compassion. But not like that part that you bring. So we're all called. And it'd be good for everybody to really start finding out where, where you fit. Because it's, that, that's where you find out who and where you, fit, where you are in the body. When you find out what your calling is, it'll help show you exactly where you fit in the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we're, he's he saved us and called us with a holy calling. Yes, sir. 
Not according to our works. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. But according to his own purpose yes. and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. So, so God foreordained us. God gifted us. God equipped us with abilities and talents. He equipped us with ministries before we were ever born. Come on now. So when we were born, it was put in us for the glory of God, for his ministry. Read, brother. But is now made manifest. Thank you, Jesus. By yes. the appearing of our Savior, Amen. Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. who has abolished death. There it is. That's what I want to get. He has abolished it. Yes, sir. Thank you, Jesus. He has abolished death for us. He's made death of none effect. We might pass through death's door, but we don't suffer eternal damnation. He's made it of none effect. But we're not condemned by death, what people call death. We have a hope. Nobody has, has that. The other religions, they don't have that hope. Lord have mercy. Jesus Christ has abolished death. Believers, saints of God, we have more to look forward to than what we can ever, than what I can ever imagine. We have more to see in eternity. We're going to spend eternity with God. To be with him, he's abolished death. So we got to get busy. Because Jesus is coming. He's coming, and he's not coming after spectators. Mm -mm. No, he's not coming at people who are, who, people who, they like, you know how people pull the, that uh, one armed bandit, the slot machines? They take a chance. He's not coming after people who, who are thinking, they, I might hit it. I might make it this time. When Jesus comes, I might go. No, he's, no, you won't go. Jesus is coming to get people, those who've passed through death door, those who are alive at his coming. He's coming to get people who are expecting him. He's coming back after a church. He's coming back after born again believers. Even those in the old text. Now he's not going to rapture them up, but they're coming eventually. They won't be going in the rapture. The, some of the Old Testament saints that died in faith. They're coming. They're going to be guests at the wedding. They're going to be there. The rapture is for the bride of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For the church. Hallelujah. Even for those saints, dear saints, those loved ones who, who, who died looking and expecting him, looking for the rapture. He's not coming back after those who just made it a point to make sure they were at church every Sunday. He's not coming back for those. He's not coming back for those who didn't think it was worth their while. I got better things to do on Sunday. He's not coming after them. God knows my heart. He does. <laughs> That's why he's not coming back for you. <laughs> he, he does know. <laughs> he knows when people don't take him seriously, when they don't truly love him and appreciate the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. When they've not met God, when they don't know Jesus, when they've never really, they don't see him. If you see Jesus, he, he oh man, the most valuable thing ever in your whole life. It, more valuable than your life. When you meet him. He abolished, just read that, read that part again. Yes, sir. Who has abolished death and has brought life and Thank immortality you, to light through the gospel. Through the gospel. And that's what we have. So let's get busy. What are we waiting on? Jesus is coming. He's coming back after, well, I tell you, let's get one more scripture concerning this. 
Corinthians, brother, while you're up there. First Corinthians. Everybody's heard this a oh, while. Wow. Anyway, let's, let's, let's get this. Because I'm going to talk about the captain here for a minute. And you have to know him. Read, read brother. First Corinthians 15 and 51. Yes, sir. Behold, I showed you a mystery. Now here's the mystery right here. We shall not all sleep. Thank you, Jesus. And, and the mystery is what? We shall not all sleep. Now, what, what, what is a mystery, though? What is it? It's a hidden truth. A hidden, a hidden truth, truth that's what? Been revealed. revealed. Yes, sir. Now revealed. And this mystery is that we're not all going to die. It's not over when we go to the grave. Goodness. Just think about that. Everybody, everybody is going to live forever somewhere. But in this case, this is talking about the, the life of a believer. This is talking about believers, people who've been saved and they love Jesus. Say, so we shall not all sleep. We're not all going to die. We're going to lose some along the way. Some of us are going to go into eternity. Jesus tarries. Some believers are going to pass on. They, some believers, have, a lot already have. But we shall all, we should not all die. But we shall all be changed. All of us are going to be changed. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Do you have what it takes to be changed? Do you have inside of you Given by God, because we don't have, a, by ourselves, of ourselves, we don't have what it takes, no. But do we have that gift of God? Have we been sealed with the seal of God? Filled with the Holy Ghost. So that we can be changed. You got to have God's spirit and without it and it's not just it's not just being churchy it's, it's, it's a life it's having the life of God inside of you the anointing of God so we're not all going to die but we shall all all believers not all everybody preachers like to preach this like everybody we, we're all going up around God's throne every time somebody dies They could die reading porn and with a gun in their hand, killing up a, a bunch of people when they have the funeral, though. I know there's somewhere. Y'all know the story. Some of y'all can see it better than I can. <laughs> but there are going to be so many people who are going to be in that, that same boat to stand before God eternally lost, ready for hell, going into eternity lost to breathe that last breath without God. The worst thing that can ever happen to anybody, their death is just beginning. So Jesus Thank you, Jesus, for us. He's abolished death for us. When we go into eternity, man, praise God. We, 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 that, that's just it. Waiting on, just waiting to arrive at our final destination. Waiting to be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. And it can happen so quick. The Bible, and this is the mystery that it's going to take place so fast. It's going to be how quick, brother? In a moment. In a moment. What is a moment of time? A moment. What is a moment of out of the vast span of time, eternity? What are we going to call it? In a, in a, that's not even not even a minute, not a second. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Yes, At the last trump. That quick. That quick, do you have what it takes? Are you ready? 
If you've been saved, praise God. If you have really re to have received Jesus means that you haven't received part of him. You've not received part of his word, part of his, you've received the word of God. You've received Jesus as your Lord and your Savior completely. You are no longer, I'm no longer in charge of my own life. I'm not the king of my life. God is. If you've not been filled with God's spirit, then you're not ready. If this event takes place, sadly, there are going to be people still left here. In, not just in the world, we know that. But in the world's church of living God, there are going to be some people left here. It's going to be frightening. The world's going to be cast into chaos. Jesus, he preached about it. He talked about it. He said two people are going to be grinding together at the meal. Two people are going to be in bed together. And the one shall be taken and another left. Having a conversation with somebody, one's taken, the other left. God have mercy. And people have been preaching this for so long that it's, it's beginning to sort of not mean anything to, I'll say, non-believers. They might have been real religious, upset about it, worried about it at first, but as time goes on, well, I've heard that before. I've heard that for years. I heard it. But it has no effect on their lives. And they begin to live in the Bible speaks of it. Jesus spoke that parable. Eat and drink with the drunken. They live loose lives. They ain't worry about God. <laughs> no. They have no fear of God. Uh -uh. And right at that exact moment, he said, I'm coming as a thief. He said that. I'm going to wait until people are not watching. I'm going to wait until I know they're not expecting and right then, when sin is at its darkest, oh man, I'm coming. And he's going to snatch his church out. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. We shall not all sleep, but we, all of us, all believers shall be changed. Why? Because flesh and blood shall not inherit, right? The flesh and blood is, go ahead and read it. Just read it right here. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. Mm -hmm. For the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. Thank you, Jesus. And we shall be changed. And we shall, we shall be changed. We're going to have glorified bodies. Flesh and blood is not going, to, we're not going to inherit the kingdom. We're going to be changed. Hallelujah. Glorified heavenly bodies. We're going to have bodies like Jesus. We're going to be like him. We're going to see him like he is. It's going to be wonderful to see him face to face then in a body. Hallelujah. To look at him, to see him. See the, this Jesus who died for us, who shed blood for us, took the spikes, his hands and feet, spear in his side. I don't know if he's going to still present that way or not. I don't know. But he might. But we're going to have those kind of bodies too. And it's going to be so good. I, I know we all won't be able to embrace him. I don't know what eternity holds, but we'll all want to embrace him. We're all going to want to follow at his feet. We're all going to want to kiss his feet and just love him and oh, and, and, and what, some people think they're going to have questions. No, you won't. Thank you, thank you, oh Jesus. Thank you, thank you. If you overcome with that now, what do you think it's going to be like in eternity? To know that he's, that this is my savior. He loved me. Three, brother, we're going to let this go. Then we're going to.
It For this exist. corruptible must put on incorruption. What is incorruptible? What's corruptible? This stuff. Yes, so corruptible flesh. Yes, Go ahead. And this mortal must put on immortality. Hall hallelujah. We're going to take on immortality? Yes, Praise God. We're going to take on like a heavenly nature. Yes, sir. Live forever immortally. Yes. Living forever. Forever in the presence of God, praising God, doing the service of God. Thank you, Jesus. And for some, see, that means nothing. Hereafter means nothing. I know the Word of God teaches us how to live on planet Earth, what to do, and how to take care of ourselves, our business. Under, under the umbrella of God's grace, his mercy, under God's principles, that's the way we live on planet Earth. But this Earth is not our home. Don't ever think that. That Jesus said, my kingdom is what? Not of this world. It's not. Live, do the best by God's grace you can here on planet Earth. But don't get so wrapped up in it that you become a carnal, that's all you think about. You're just a carnal-minded person. And you get consumed and overcome with, with greed and lust. and just what, Forget. Ah. Every success you have comes from God. Look at it that way. And everything that you have, every su success you have, everything you do should have some meaning behind it. Some blessing behind it. Sure, you'll be blessed yourself. But what about others? Those are the treasures, the things that you, the way you, you do that, the way you handle that, that's where you store up treasures in eternity. Your character, the, your, the character of believer, that's going to follow you on into eternity. Forever. Not just this natural, worldly stuff. It's not going to happen. So this corruptible must put on incorruption, this mortal must put on immortality. Go ahead. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written. Death is swallowed up in victory. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes. Go ahead, read it. O death, where is thy sting? Where is thy sting? O Go grave, ahead. where is thy victory? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The sting of death is sin. Mm -hmm. And the strength of sin is the, the law. The strength of sin is the law. Go ahead. But thanks be to God. Yes. Which gives us the victory gave through us our what? Lord Jesus Christ. He gave us what? The victory. Victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Victory. Finish that, finish that. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast. What does that mean? Faithful, Faithful consistent, focused, dedicated. Be immovable. Be steadfast. Don't, don't live with a, a, in a wavering minded kind of way. Don't, don't live that way. Believe God, trust God, know that, that you're like, someone was asking me, but how do you know the difference between a, a, what you're calling, what you're called for, or a mission? And, and that was a valid question, you know. Uh, your mission could be your calling. Your calling could be your mission. That's what you're supposed to accomplish. But a mission could be a part of your calling. You might call, be called for a certain thing, a certain ministry. And our ministry is not preaching. Please get that in your head. Our, it's not being a deacon. It's not, uh, you can have a, a, a ministry. The Bible says in the church, you got all kinds of things. You got helps, you got governments. You got, you got a lot going on in, 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 a, in the congregation of the righteous. Ministries are areas of service. Ministry, that's what ministry is. Ministry is, is supplying a need. Doing that, taking care, of, taking care of business, uh, relieving the afflicted, bringing comfort to those who need it. So, but but in in the case of your mission, you could have a mission. Part of you, you could be in the ministry of preacher, so you could be a minister a preacher. But your mission on this particular day might be God might want to send you to help somebody else. And the best way I could explain that to the person was it's, it's like football, you know. And I don't know a whole lot about football. I, I like to watch it because it's a good game. 
and you know, it's, it's, it's sometimes brutal. And I like to know who's winning and losing, so I know who to mess with and check with. <laughs> so I like to, <laughs> but it's like in football, you got the team there. And ever, their mission is to, to, to take this game, to win the game. Everybody has that mission. I mean, that, that's the goal. That's the calling. That's their goal. Your calling is your goal. That's the goal. And in order to do that, everybody has a what? And this person was asking about the assignment. That's what it was. Everybody has an assignment. Everybody has something to do. And you might be the person to say, if you miss a block, if your assignment is to, as a tight end, if your assignment is to come out and you to, to block this middle linebacker, you to, to hit him, and you miss it, then you might cause your, your team to go into a deficit. You know, with, the other team might score a point on your run, whatever, gain yardage, if you miss your assignment. But the goal is to, everybody's goal, is to win the game. And on, in your calling, you're going to have different missions in your calling. The ultimate thing you have to achieve, you minister like God wants you to minister. You give, you become the, the wife, a husband that God wants you to be, the, the young man, the young lady that, 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 according to scripture, God is molding you into through his word. Don't fight it. Embrace it. And along the way, you're going you're gonna to have some missions. You're going to have to overcome some things. You're going to have to know when to lighten your load in life, when to let certain people go in life. And to never lift your head up above anybody. You know what I'm saying? Above anybody. So we all have a calling. And you're going to have some, some personal private missions that God wants you to conquer, that he wants you to see through, to take care of some people, to, to help the homeless, help the sick, the, the, the elderly, whatever it is. We all have a part. There are no spectators. That's the only thing about foot and real football. You can have a bench full of how many people? Hmm? 53 people. All of them not playing. Some of them might not get to play that season. You know? but they all practice, they all part of it, you know. God's got nobody sitting on the bench. Everybody should be actively involved in ministry one way or the other. So God has given us the victory through the Lord Jesus Christ and it tells us in the 15th verse again, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast. Steadfast. Unmovable. Yes. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Oh, yes. Read. For as much as you know. Thank you, Jesus. That your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. Everything you do in the Lord is not in vain. People might not pat you on the back all the time. People might not recognize it. People might not see it. But God does. And that's where the reward is. I've got to read this. We're going to close out. But speaking about the captain of our salvation, it reminded me of an encounter. And we know that captain of our salvation is Jesus. He's, he, he's the head. He's the director. Praise God. He's made like unto us. And that's what uh, in some military units, the, the captains, they were officers, but they were the some of the, the closest, the, the rank of captain or whatever, they were some of the ones who were actively, in some ways, involved with the troops. Of course, you had your non-commissioned officers and all those, all those two. But captains, you know, they weren't just sitting somewhere in some ivory tower doing stuff. Or, you know, the, but that, that's important, too. You know, the generals mapping out strategy and planning and very important. The captains uh, saw that the, the, the missions, the work was executed. It was taken care of, involved with the, with the troops just about directly. So Jesus is the captain of our salvation. And we're going to go and read this about how a man had an, an encounter with the captain of the Lord's host. If I can find it in the book of Joshua. Moses had passed on. 
and uh, the charge of everything fell on Joshua. And God did some marvelous, miraculous things, you know, with, as he's always done for his own namesake, for his own glory, because he loved his people. He loved his people. Always has. His chosen, near and dear to his heart. So they came out, out, of, out of Egypt, face to face with, caught between Pharaoh and the Red Sea. God did a wonderful and miraculous thing. Dried up the Red Sea. And they went across, the Bible says, I mean, yeah, Red Sea, on dry land. That's amazing. The ox carts what, didn't get bogged down in the mud because there was none. Yes, God delivered them with the might he always has. And still, for all God did, leading them through the wilderness, all the battles they fought, God gave them victory, things, things won, uh, miraculously fed them fed them manna from, as they complained, gave them water when they complained, water from a rock. Showed them salvation. Delivered them from their own sins when they rebelled against God, wanted to kill Moses, mad at Moses, wanted to get rid of him. It's crazy. And God lets uh, vipers into the camp and they bit, bit him. And Moses pleaded for him. He said, okay, I'll tell you what, go, this is what you do. Make a, a serpent of brass wrap around the pole, look, lift it up before the people. And when they behold it, when they look at it, in other words, look, believe, and live, then they live. And he did just what, what God told him. Made a snake out of brass. Brass, in biblical terms, represents judgment of God. Lifted it up before the people and all those who looked and believed immediately the venom departed from their bodies. God can do anything. Let me tell you, today, saints, God, if people will look, believe, and live, God can and will do anything. There's nothing impossible. Nothing. No issue at all that God cannot, that he's, that he's not already spoken to and provided for. And Jesus said, it's a, just, just like Moses did that in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. He is our salvation. He is our hope. He's our healing. He's everything. He's our life. And all you try to get people to do is look and truly Believe. Don't just get religious. Believe. Yes, sir. And live the life that God wants you to live without that poisonous venom of sin and Satan just flowing through our veins, our lives. Yes, sir. Be delivered. Get delivered. Amen. And while thousands of people lived, thousands of them died because they couldn't take that seriously. And they died, so God, God, God did so much, and, and many more things like that, he just, he blessed them. They complained about eating manna from heaven. Oh, and it had all, every nutrient, everything they needed, the protein, everything. They need for life, to sustain life. God rained manna from heaven, fed them, they lived and, and, and enjoyed the salvation of God on a daily basis, were fed. They literally ate from the hand of God. Yes, and they were warned, don't try to gather up enough for tomorrow because it, it won't last. And it didn't. Some people tried it. Yes, and it rotted, it corrupted. Yes, Except for one day, the day before the Sabbath. Yes, so on the sixth day, okay, you gather enough for two days because on the Sabbath day, you're not gonna get out here and gather this stuff up. But, and, and by the hand of God, by the grace of God, miraculously gathering up double on the sixth day, it didn't, it didn't rot. 
God's hand was in it. You have to look at God's hand being in provision in your life, for your life, yes, sir. in your health, yes, sir. your family structure, everything. Yes, sir. Man. God provides. Yes, sir. The earth is the Lord's. And everything, everybody in it, yes, it's God's. He brought them through all of that and gave them victory. And forgive me if I don't remember right off the, all the, the ones who didn't want to come over. But some, some of those Jews, I mean, Moses been a reasonable man. He, he allowed them to do certain things. Yes, it was time for them to cross Jordan. They, didn't, they, they told Moses before he died, well, we don't want to go over. But two and a half tribes said, well, we found what we want on this side. See, they were worldly oriented. That's the way people are. They didn't want to receive the promise. The promised land, the land of Canaan, the God, they didn't want that because their hearts were here. Yes, sir. They were Jews. They were Hebrews. They'd been delivered like everybody else. It's Reuben and Gad and half the tribe of Manasseh or whatever. They said, we, found, we, got, said, we, we got the ox and sheep and Camels and we got, we got beef and all that good stuff. And we found the perfect land over here on this side. So Moses, okay, that's what you want to do. But even if you do want to stay on this side, Jordan, if you say this is where you want to stake your inheritance, okay, fine. But the curse of God, in so many words, is going to be on you. If out of all your brothers and sisters have gone through and you neglect to participate with them, until they get their inheritance on the other side, Jordan. God, and, and they, whew, I, don't, I don't know what all happened to them afterward. But they said, okay, we'll go ahead and we'll set up little areas for our families. But we'll go armed before all the rest of the children of Israel over Jordan. And we'll fight the battles with them. To every man comes into his inheritance. And they did. And then they, re they returned later to the other side. Stuck in this, don't be so stuck on this world you can't receive the promise of God. And I believe we do limit ourselves. I do, I think we hurt ourselves. When we get so involved with stuff here, we're not concerned about the promises of God. We're not concerned about what God wants out of us spiritually. We would just want to know what we can put our hands on right now. We'll neglect God. We'll neglect church. We'll neglect our family. We'll neglect whatever. And yet we expect the blessing of God to be honest. You'll lose. You'll lose out like that. Anyway, I didn't mean to dwell on that too long, but we're going to read Joshua right now. Okay, we, we got to this point. So it's time to Get on over Jordan in the third chapter. The book of Joshua, third chapter, starting with the 10th verse. Yes, sir. Well, he'd already told him, say, I'm going to show you in the sight of all, bless you, so all Israel will know that as I was with Moses, I'm going to be with you. Yes, sir. So when you come to the river, to the brink of the Jordan River, stand still in Jordan. Jordan River, full of water. Tenth verse, brother. Yes, sir. And Joshua said, Hereby ye shall know that the living God is among you. Hallelujah. And that he will without fail drive out from before you the Canaanites mm -hmm. and the Hittites and the Hivites. All those different people who are occupying Canaan. Yes, sir. And go in eleventh verse. Behold. The ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth passes over before you into Jordan. The ark of the covenant's going first, but it had to be borne by, by the priest. So God said to do this. Go, read it. Now, therefore, take you 12 men out of the tribes of Israel, out of every tribe a man, and it shall come to pass as soon as the soles of the feet Listen. of the priests that bear the ark of the Lord, that the Lord of all the earth 
shall rest in the waters of Jordan. Listen. That the waters of Jordan shall be cut off from the waters. Listen. They come down from above. I'm going to stop it. Yes, sir. I'm going to stop the flow of the river. And he told him that as soon as the, the feet of the priest, now the Bible tells us that we are a chosen generation. We are a royal priesthood. Yes, sir. We've read in the Old Testament and in the New House, in that same scripture, that God is making us a kingdom of priests. We're all in the priesthood. We are, we all, those who have been saved, we all have the Holy Ghost within us. Now that was a challenge. They'd already come through the, the Red Sea. They saw that, and, I, and I'm, I'm sure that a, after all that, some, some of the people were probably still a little bit fearful. Wonder if God is still with them. God said, well, I'm gonna show you, I'm, I got you, I'm with you. He did the same thing to the Jordan River. Did the same thing, dried it up. That is amazing. He said, as soon as the soles of the feet of the priest that bear the ark, the Lord of all the earth, that shall rest in the waters, then I'm going to cut it off. And, and then they went on, brother, on down to the 17th verse. Yes, sir. And the priests that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, stood firm on dry ground in the midst of Jordan. On dry ground. Yes, sir. They stood on listen, dry ground. The priests that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord. But first they had to go and put their feet in the, they had to stand up on, at the brink of the water. At the edge of the water. They had to get their feet wet, didn't they? It's time for us to get our feet wet. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Time for us to start trusting God. Yes, sir. Man. It's time to start taking some challenges. Amen. It's time for us to start looking beyond the obstacles and looking beyond the challenges. Amen. You'll never get beyond the challenge unless you can see the victory of God on the other side of the challenge. Yes, sir. You have to. You have to know that you already have victory. They stood in, in the water, yes. and the water was dried up underneath the feet of the priest. Okay, good. All right, brother. The fourth chapter, fifth verse. Yes, sir. And Joshua said unto them, Pass over before the ark of the Lord your God into the midst of Jordan, and take you every man of you a stone upon his shoulder, according unto the number of the tribes Hallelujah. of the children of Israel, Great. that this may be a sign among you, that when your children ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What mean ye by these stones? Then ye shall answer them, that the waters of Jordan were cut off Thank before you, the ark of the they covenant. They wanted to remember what God had done for them forever. Yes, sir. Now the 18th verse. Yes, sir. And it came to pass when the priests that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord were come up out of the midst of Jordan mm -hmm. and the soles of the priest's feet were lifted up unto the dry land that the waters of Jordan returned unto their so place. here again, God separated the waters, didn't he? Yes, For his people. Yes, and when sir. they came out, the waters returned. Yes, sir. So they were facing some things. In the fifth chapter, now God did all, all this stuff. And in the fifth chapter, and just gonna read a couple of verses at the top and a couple at the bottom. The first and uh, the first verse. Yes, sir. First verse, brother. And it came to pass when all the kings of the Amorites, which were on the side of Jordan westward, and all the kings of the Canaanites, yes. which were by the sea, heard that the Lord had dried up the waters so, of Jordan. News traveled, didn't it? Yes, sir. Word got around. Oh, man. Got, now, people had already heard how God brought them out of Egypt. People already heard about how, how God brought plagues and wrath on Egypt. Yes, sir. They heard about the Red Sea, the parting of the Red Sea. 
And now they're caught. Man, this same God has dried up the Jordan River and they're coming. They're coming to our house. <laughs> God had promised them their house. He promised them those, those lands. And they were going to take the land of Canaan. So they, they were going to try to shut it down. So what, what happened? All the kings of the Canaanites which were by the sea mm -hmm. heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of Jordan from before the children of Israel uh -huh. until we were passed over that their heart melted. They're all men. Neither was their spirit in them anymore. Hallelujah. Because of the children of Israel. So they, had to, they were going to try to plan a way to deal with them. Their hearts melted because they knew that God was with them. Now, you don't want people to be afraid of you, but you want people to know that God is in you. Yes, sir. You want to live that kind of Amen. life where people know that God is in you, that God is with you. Yes, sir. And in the 10th verse, brother, yes, sir. they were approaching Jericho. And what happened? And the children of Israel encamped in Gilgal. Mm-hmm and kept the Passover on the 14th day you, of Jesus. the month Thank you, at Jesus. even in the plains of Jericho. And what did they do? And they did eat of the old corn of the land. They ate from the land. Once they passed over Jordan, no more manna. Yes, sir. Come on now. Yes, sir. God had delivered them. He brought them into the land that he promised them. And they ate the old corn of the land that, were, that were, had previously grown over in the land of Gilgal yes, sir. on the other side of Jordan. Go ahead. And they did eat of the old corn of the land on the morrow after the Passover, mm -hmm. unleavened cakes and parched corn you, in the selfsame day. Mm -hmm. And the manna ceased on the morrow after they had eaten of yeah. the old corn right. of the land. Neither had the children of Israel manna <laughs> anymore. Isn't that something? God saw them through. Yes, sir. The whole ordeal, the, all their traveling, God, can, even after he had to deal with some of them. Yes, sir. Somehow they complained about the manna. God still fed them the manna, but when they, they complained, they wanted flesh. Yes, We're tired of eating this light bread, this white bread, whatever they call it. Yeah. We want some flesh. So God brought, he, he got tired of their grumbling. God brought them flesh. He rained, what is it, quails? Yes, sir. Rained quail in, just, and they just brought them in. Struck them, they fell dead right in the midst of the camp. When they had flesh, had meat to eat to their heart's desire, and God said while the meat was, this, what the word says, while the meat was yet in their mouths, God killed the, the fattest of them. Yes, sir. He got rid of them, gave them what they wanted because, why? Because they complained about the blessing of God. Yes, sir complained about the miraculous, and, that, and we get like that. We get so unthankful for what God has given us and the way God sustains us, the way God provides. We get covetous. We get greed and it becomes more about what we want, more than being thankful for God's provision. Yes, sir. But he sustained them through the, the whole ordeal, and here they are. Ready to take this, I believe Jericho was the first city. That's where Achan messed up. But Jericho was going to be a battle. And they knew it. They looked at it as being like, you can't really approach to it because it's a walled city. It's a fortified city. Everybody knows the story. You know how it came down. So I'm sure Joshua had been praying about things and probably been working things out with some of the, the elder statesmen of Israel. Now, how are we going to do this? And seeking God's guidance on how to take this city. And something happened. Yes, sir. And brother, let's read this. Let's, let's the 13th through the 15th verses. And we're going we're gonna to let this go. Yes, sir. Well, he, he met. He met somebody. They were trying to figure out what to do. How to do it. Jericho was there. With the great walls of Jericho all the way around it. And they had to overcome it. And he, let's just read it. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and Thank looked. You, and behold, 
there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn Hallelujah. in his hand. With a sword. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> he saw this man with a, a sword in his hand, drawn out. Yes, sir. So he was ready for war. El Gabor. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> but it was somebody else. Yes, sir. <laughs> he was ready for war. Yes, sir. So they weren't alone. I'm sure that the, once he got this question answered, he probably knew when he saw him. But he said, are you for us? So he knew that he was there for the victory of one or the either side. See? But he knew that he was for them. Read it, brother. And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Art thou for us or for our adversaries? Are you with us? <laughs> so this man must have been pretty fierce looking. Yes, sir. Looked like a, like some people have, have a middle name taking care of business. Looked like he was one that took care of business. Yes, sir. He said, No. Nah. I'm captain of the Lord's host. Yes, sir. I'm captain of the host. That's another captain. The same one as the captain of our salvation. Yes, sir. Jesus has, has shown up at different times all throughout this Bible. He showed up, I believe, with, a with Abraham. First three men came out of the desert to talk to Abraham about what he's going to do in Sodom and all, all that stuff. But only two men, the angels, went to Sodom. No, what happened to the third? That was Jesus. <laughs> he's always shown up. Yes, sir. Praise God. And he is the captain. He yes, gets in, involved yes, sir. in God's affairs, God's business with men. He said, no, nah, I'm not about the will of man, but as captain of the Lord's host. Go, go read that. And he said, nay, but as captain of the host of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Am I now come? Amen. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth. Hallelujah. And did worship. Now, if this had just been a, a prophet, a warrior, if this had been an angel, I don't believe Josh, Joshua would have worshiped him. Yes, sir. No. This was straight deity. Yes, sir. This was God. This was the Lord Jesus Christ. He, and, and anybody else, would, if it had been an angel that Joshua fell on his feet, the angels would have done what? No, no. no. Yes, sir. Don't worship me. They, they've always turned people away from that. Yes, you worship sir. God. Yes, sir. And he fell on his face yes, sir. to the earth. And that's, do you know that uh, every time you read about worship in the Bible, you read about how somebody's doing something with their body. Yes, sir. That's what, it's part of it. Yes, sir. Clapping their hands, bowing their heads, putting their faces on the ground, laying, laying out straight out prostate on, the, on their faces, on their bellies. Yes, sir. Lifting their hands to the Lord. Amen. Worship is shown through what you do with your body. Yes, sir. It becomes a part of it. Yes, sir. And Joshua fell on his face to worship. Yes, sir. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship Hallelujah. and said unto him, What saith my Lord unto his servant? Hallelujah. And the captain of the Lord's host said unto listen, Joshua. Listen to, said to Joshua, the, this captain yes, sir. of the Lord's host. It, what, it wasn't Michael. Now, Michael was bad. He's, he is a bad boy. Michael's an archangel. He's a warring angel. This one, <laughs> the captain of the Lord's host, <laughs> had Michael in his charge. So the captain of the Lord's host said, you take, do what? Loose thy shoe from off thy foot. Take your, your shoes off. Yes, sir. You instead of talking to me, take your shoes off. Yes, sir. <laughs> Go ahead. Read, brother. For the place whereon thou standest is holy. That's God. The and place where you stand, 
the same thing that happened to Moses. Yes, sir. As Moses stood in the presence of God in front of the burning bush. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Take your shoes off. Yes, sir. This is holy ground. Yes, sir. And this captain of the Lord's host was Jesus. Yes, sir. The Lord Jesus. Yes, sir. The Christ. Yes, sir. That's why he would no. Nah. He didn't tell me, no, get up, no, take your shoes off. Yes, sir. When you speak to me, you, and wherever God is, is holy. Yes, sir. So if we are, which we are, if you've been born again, if you've been saved, the temple of the living God, hallelujah, our body should, should constantly, in a sense now, you can't walk around with your face on the ground or your head bowed. Don't live like that. Walk in full confidence of God. But we should, as the Bible says, present our bodies for a what? A living, a living sacrifice. sacrifice. We should live in constant worship to God. Yes, sir. We have to, yes, if sir. God's here, which he is, Amen. then we have been made holy by his divine presence. Yes, sir. And we should acknowledge that yes, and respect sir. that. Thank God for that. And, and what did Joshua do? Did he and buck? Joshua did so. And he did so. He did it. And that's what we're going to do. We need to, first of all, we're going to get our feet wet. You start accepting that instead of running from challenge, all right, looking at challenges, though it's going to be something that can't be dealt with, uh, not moved, we're going to ask God to deal with some challenges, physical, mental, and otherwise. I believe he will. But you got to stand in the water. You, you can't run away from the water. You got to put your feet, your feet in the, in the Jordan. Put your feet in the, the, in the, if the Red Sea. Red, put, put your feet in it. Knowing that you're going across. And in both cases, with Moses and the Jews coming out of Egypt and Joshua and the Jews going into Canaan, God dried the way. He brought them right to it and dried it up and they were able to cross. God will get you through. No, no matter what it is, no matter what the challenge looks like, no matter what, it might look, look like the challenge is on the other side. God will get you through. Praise God. Know who you're living for. Know who you, know who you love and know who loves you. You've been listening to the Words of Knowledge broadcast with Pastor Alan Harrington. If you would like to write Pastor Harrington, send all correspondence to Words of Knowledge, P.O. Box 11005, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37401. That's Words of Knowledge, P.O. Box 11005, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37401. Tune in next week for another Words of Knowledge broadcast.